Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. We'll begin with the uh, Forest Preserves of Cook County's land acknowledgement. The Forest Preserves of Cook County acknowledges that we are on the lands of the Councils of Three Fires, the Ojibwe, Ottawa, and Potawatomi, as well as the Miami, Ho-Chunk, Menominee, Sauk, and Mishwaukee peoples. As a land management agency, we acknowledge that we've played a role in shaping the histories of local Native Americans by acquiring this land. We also recognize, share, and celebrate their immemorial ties to the land. We commit ourselves to developing deeper partnerships that advocate for the progress, dignity, and humanity of the many diverse Native Americans who live and practice their heritage and traditions on this land today. I want to thank everyone who's come to join us to celebrate. I particularly want to acknowledge Cook County Commissioner Monica Gordon, Marshall Johnson, Chief Conservation Officer of the National Audubon Society, Michelle Parker, the Executive Director and Vice President of Audubon Great Lakes, Jill Estrada, a Commissioner of the Great Lakes Commission, Chip O'Leary, Northern Regional Manager with the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, <laughs> Rob Guerrera from Congressman Robin Kelly's office, and Arnold Randall, General Superintendent of the Forest Preserves of Cook County and his staff who are here today, and Teresa Odom, who's Chief of Police of the Forest Preserves. Ecological restoration of our lands is one of the core goals of the Forest Preserves. In a developed, highly populated region, nature needs our help. More than 15,000 of the 70,000 acres of the Forest Preserves is now under re restoration or active maintenance, 10 times, 10 times what it was just a decade ago. And by the way, I always say, you know, we have 102 counties in Illinois, 102. And Cook County is not only the densely, most densely populated, it's also the most ecologically diverse. The project we celebrate today embodies our commitment and is a fascinating cutting edge example of our restoration efforts. We're standing now at the southern end of Wolf Lake at a new, land, new landing built by the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. Thank you, IDNR. About half a mile to the south, the forest preserves Powderhorn Lake is a beautiful and relaxing place to go fishing and boating. The land includes a 130-acre Powderhorn Prairie and Marsh, Marsh Nature Preserve, the only state-dedicated natural, natural preserve within the city of Chicago's limits. We recognize, however, that the Powderhorn can offer more. Because of this project, we've established the connection between Powderhorn and Wolf Lake. The result is a, cor a corridor both in the water and on land for animals and plants, and improve marsh and dune and swale ecosystems. That's great for native plants, fish, birds, and other wildlife that depend on these environments. That's great for us too. More fishing, more bird washing, less flooding, and more preserved green space in an urban community. For many decades, for many decades, the southeast side has not received enough attention or investment. The Calumet region is rich in cultural and natural resources with potential for even more. The forest preserves of Cook County are one of the gems in Chicago and the suburbs, protecting native lands and providing residents with opportunities to enjoy the natural world. Equity and inclusion are core, girl, core goals of our forest preserves. This project represents another investment in southeast Cook County, another step toward more sustainable, equitable, place for everyone, everyone who calls Cook County home. I'm grateful for the organizations that have been invaluable partners on this project. I want to thank Audubon Great Lakes for their vision and coordination with the Forest Preserves to make this idea a reality. I also want to give special thanks to the Great Lakes Commission, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Ad Administration, NOAA, and the Coastal Management Program at the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. All, I want to thank all of them for their support of this specific project and their dedication and attention to the Calumet region. We are in the district of Commissioner Monica Gordon. I want to call her next. And I would ask that each person introduce the person who follows them. Thank you. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I want to send a special thanks to President Preckwinkle for her consistent commitment to environment and sustainability. I'm Commissioner Monica Gordon from the 5th District, and I'm delighted to be here. I also want to thank everyone involved, President Randall, 
this is an opportunity for us to meet our equitable goals to make sure that everyone has access to recreation and be opp opportunities to build camaraderie. I am very pleased to stand before you to celebrate this occasion for Powderhorn, and I'm very pleased to welcome all the speakers today. Thank you so much for being in the 5th District today as we continue to make sure everyone has access and this valuable resource. Thank you. Also, I'd like to introduce um, General Superintendent of Forest Preserves of Cook County, Mr. Arnold Randall. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Forest Preserves and welcome to the southeast side of the city of Chicago. And, and as the President mentioned, we don't have a lot of Forest Preserves in the city, but this is this is part of a, a network here on the southeast side that we're really proud of. And those of, those of you who know me know that I have deep southeast side roots. My mother grew up here. My father worked in the steel mill. My grandfather worked in the steel mill. So very deep roots. So I know this area well. And uh, this project is really exciting to me for a lot of reasons because I know what it looked like before. So good morning again. The Forest Preserves Powderhorn Lake Nature Preserve is a special place home to over about 250 types of plants from black oaks to elderberry to prickly pear cactus to more than 2,000 species of insects. I'm not sure who counted that, but that's a big number. And over the course of a year, 100 different types of birds. I know who count the birds. But as with the locations across the Calumet region, more than a century of urban and industrial development had fundamentally altered the natural conditions at Powderhorn Lake. Water levels were rising to the level at the northern end uh, so there was no longer the marsh or habitat that native birds, birds and fish depended on. Swales in the nature preserve were filling with water and invasive weeds. As important, the lake was losing capacity to absorb heavy rainfall, leading to flooding in nearby communities. The Powderhorn Lake Habitat Restoration Project recreates the historic seasonal rhythms of the wetlands, drier in the fall and winter, wetter in the spring with rain. To accomplish this, we had added land to the preserves in this area, including prop the property directly across the street behind you, uh, created a new creek, installed underground pipes, built water control structures that can lower the, the water level at Powderhorn Lake by two feet. That is very complicated. Uh, the system includes design features to allow more fish to move back and forth between Powderhorn and Wolf Lakes and restore natural fisheries to the marsh. Native plants can return to the areas that have been underwater year-round, and Powderhorn will become even more robust, a more robust attraction for local and migrating birds. We already have seen fish, turtles. We actually, I was out in our tour earlier in the year, and we saw a turtle making its way through. Um, and wetland birds using the expanded and improved ecosystems. This is a project that not only improves forest preserves land, but has impact beyond our properties. It preserves green space in an urban community, mitigates flood issues for lo the local neighborhood, establishes a green corridor of movement by native flora and fauna, and reestablishes hydrolo the hydrological connection between Powderhorn Lake and Lake Michigan. Accomplishing, accomplishing this, all this has been a monumental task, both technically and organizationally, particularly be because of how this landscape has been so radically changed from remnants from an industrial past to the current patchwork of landowners and land uses. We simply could not have accomplished what we're celebrating today without the deep partnership of multiple agencies. I want to call out a few. So I'll start with Michelle Parker, Nat Miller, Andy Heinekel, Jennifer Deegan, Daniel Suarez, and Servando, Servando Moreno from Audubon Great Lakes. Let's give them a hand. Here they are. Cassie Laval and Ryan Darton from NOAA. Jill Estrada from the Great Lakes Commission. Chip O'Leary, Laura Verdun, Verdin, Kim Kraling, and Seth Love with the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. Chip actually started this project with us and is, is finishing it with the DNR, so he's, it, that tells you how complicated and long it's been going on. <laughs> Thomas Bakula with the Indiana Department of Natural Resources. Kevin O'Donnell with the US EPA. And then Dave Kraft and Kirsten James with the project management uh, engineering firm of Hay and Associates. And then finally, I want to recognize some really key Forest Preserve staff. I want to thank Troy Showerman. I think I saw Troy over there. And Steve Sillick, who's our fisheries. So, uh, for the, and they're with our resource management department. They put a lot of thought and work, and I think Troy got gray during this process because it was very complicated. Um, but they put a lot of work and effort along with all the other folks I mentioned. Um, 
So I just want to say this is a really this is this project has implications I think beyond this site. I think this could be a model for some things in other industrialized areas, not just here in Cook County, but even around the country. So there's opportunity. Uh, next, I want to introduce Michelle Parker, who is the executive director of the Nature Conservancy. Michelle. Well, close, <laughs> close, strike that. I'm Michelle Parker. I'm the executive director of Audubon Great Lakes. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> and also a vice president for National Audubon Society. And we're here for everybody. Yes, everybody who's been involved with this project knows what a massive day this is that will actually be able to connect the waters between these two water bodies. So at Audubon, we know that what is good for birds is also good for people. And this project is an awesome example of exactly that. We know that across North America in the last 50 years, we've lost about a quarter of our birds. So that's about 3 billion birds that have been lost. What we also know is places like this, the Calumet, this can be a story of hope. Powderhorn is a story of hope. The Calumet is one of the most biologically rich wetland complexes in the country. So I'm going to say that again, because this is not often what people think of when they think of the Calumet. The Calumet is one of the most biologically rich wetland complexes in the country. This is the place for us to be doing this kind of work. And what we know through our work with all of our partners who are on the ground doing restoration, who are working with the communities, who are doing the science, that projects like this work. So where we see wetlands birds across the country, really across the world, their population numbers are just tanking, just crashing. But at projects like this, we're seeing those numbers go up. And we're seeing those numbers go up here in the Calumet. So projects like this are not only good for the people who live around here, and thank you so much to the community for being so supportive and patient with this project. And patient, <laughs> I want to stress that. It's been a long project. But the support from the community, the engagement with the community has been so critically important. And uh, the work that we've, that Audubon, other nonprofits like us, I see Paul Botts back there from the Wetlands Initiative, from the government agencies to the funders, all of us came together and made, frankly, what I at least thought was going to be impossible, possible. I also want to give a big shout out to Dean Fisher, looking at it right now. Um, Dean, as the former chair of Audubon Great Lakes, was very much the fuel to our fire, always convincing us that to dream bigger and that we could do it. And even when we got to the point where we were like, oh, no, Dean, he was like, you can do it. Dream bigger, get it done. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. So as Arnold had said, this is really a model project, and it very much is a model project. It demonstrates the strength of collaboration across agencies, across nonprofits, across funders, across communities. And it's a great example of what we can accomplish together through Great Lakes Restoration Initiative funding. That's the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, GLRI. And a shout out to Kevin O'Donnell from the EPA back there, who alongside Dean has also been telling us, we can do it. Let's get this done. We can do this. Thank you, Kevin, for all your support. For those who are not familiar with the GLRI, it is a um, partnership between the EPA and 15 federal agencies and departments. It's now in its 15th year and it's deployed over $4 billion towards restoration across the Great Lakes. By really encouraging that collaboration, again, across agencies, across local, municipal, state governments and nonprofits and local communities, we're able to support projects like these. These massive complicated projects, you're gonna keep on hearing complicated, but these massive complicated projects that are gonna make such a huge difference for the water quality, the quality of life, the recreation, the fishing, the birds, the wildlife, you name it. This project is gonna have a massive impact towards the good for the people in the state. 
So what I encourage all of us to do is to take these lessons learned with Powderhorn, take the words from Dean, take the words from Kevin, and let's continue to work together. Let's continue to dream big. Let's continue as we bump into those obstacles, get even more creative, and let's get it done. Who's with me? Thank you. So next, it is my huge pleasure to uh, introduce Marshall Johnson. He's the Chief Conservation Officer for the National Audubon Society. He flew in today to be here all the way from Fargo. It's so great to have you here. Hey. <laughs> it feels like every time I'm here, I'm wishing you happy birthday, Dean. How about that, huh? Everybody, happy birthday to Dean. Is Dean. <laughs> Well, good morning. Uh, as Michelle mentioned, um, I flew in this morning from uh, North Dakota. I wore my jacket to humor you folks down in tropical Chicago uh, since it's so nice and warm here. Uh, but it is really a pleasure for me to be here. You know, in my role, Audubon works from the Arctic tree line in Canada uh, and Alaska to Chile. And in my role, I get this incredible opportunity to come and be with the communities that are uh, partnering with Audubon to preserve birds and preserve local communities. And it's really a thrill uh, for me to be here with you today. This is now my second time here at Powderhorn. It was almost what, uh, Daniel, a year ago we walked, and it's so amazing to see all of the great work that's been accomplished. As Michelle mentioned, I serve as the Chief Conservation Officer for the Audubon Society. And, um, you know, maybe we should have called this the Marsh of Dreams, uh, because uh, if you build it, obviously they will come, right? So thank you for being here. Really appreciate uh, everyone, all the work that's gone into this project. Um, for 118 years, birds have been the, th the real prism through which Audubon views its work. Uh, birds are at the heart and the soul of how we do our work. Um, we know that birds are bellwethers for, of change for our planet, for our local ecosystems. Uh, it's truly, birds are truly the, the canary in the coal mine. And the restoration here at Powderhorn and the connection to Wolf Lake uh, is a prime example of what working together can do uh, and accomplish. Uh, protecting and restoring a hundred acres of important habitat right here in this region, uh, rich with culture and history. Uh, Powderhorn Lake, uh, Lake Forest Preserve in the entire Calumet uh, region is home to one of the most biologically rich wetland complexes in the country. Uh, but unfortunately, as Michelle spoke to, it has witnessed water bird populations in decline. Um, wetlands that have been drained and filled over the years. Uh, this region is particularly important for marsh bird species, such as the least bitter, bittern and pied-billed grebe. Uh, last time I was out here, uh, Daniel and Nat Miller, who couldn't be with here uh, with us here today, uh, they. Uh, they have set up a couple of swans to fly over us and put on a show. I'm, I'm eager to see what you come up with for the folks today. Um, in my lifetime, as Michelle mentioned, we have lost three billion birds here in North America. Uh, and truly, it is projects like this, one at a time, one community committed to changing and bending the bird curve, we can bring our birds back. And when we bring our birds back, is an, it is an indicator of a healthy environment and a healthy people. And these, th these projects really show what is possible. This region once consisted of 45,000 acres of marsh habitat. Um, and little by little, by re reconnecting these important waterways, we can bring that habitat back. Uh, Audubon Science found that two-thirds of North America's birds are threatened with climate change. Right here at Powderhorn Lake, we are dealing with two extremes. Water levels are currently too high, but science and modeling indicates that climate change will cause them to be too low, too soon. 
The water control structure that we'll see here in a bit will allow water managers to adjust these extremes, to have control over these extremes to the extent possible so that we can protect the vulnerable birds and manage water levels. I want to stress that connecting waterways is no small feat. I mean, you see it in the partnership uh, that has brought together agencies and local community leaders, Audubon, and so many others, and apparently TNC. Uh, <laughs> I, almost had, I almost had a heart attack there. <laughs> Thought I was the last to know. <laughs> Thought I was the last to know something. <laughs> But uh, this structure will allow water managers to raise and lower water levels uh, of the shallow pool adjacent to Powderhorn Lake in order to establish the semi-marsh uh, conditions that threaten marsh birds need so vitally. Significant investments uh, by partners across the region are already paying dividends, and we'll see that today, to have these waterways connected for the first time. We know what restoration, uh, when done right, it actually absolutely works because we are already seeing signs of success and obviously the birds are responding. Native plants and state threatened and endangered marsh birds like the least bittern uh, and common gennelu are returning after years of decline. Um, in short, um, I just want to say on behalf of the Audubon Society, on behalf of our 2 million plus members, on behalf of our nearly 700 staff, thank you for partnering. Thank you for the results, the actions that you have taken to make not only this community better, but a better home for birds in migration and nesting here right at Potterhorn Lake. So thank you so much, and it is my great honor to welcome Jill Estrada to the stage from the Great Lakes Commission. Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Jill Estrada. I'm the Senior Program Specialist for the Great Lakes Commission's uh, Coastal Conservation and Habitat Restoration Program. Um, as you can all see from everyone who has already spoken, uh, the sec success of this project has required collaboration between government at all levels, non-government organizations, and the private sector. On behalf of the Great Lakes Commission, I would like to thank and congratulate our project team partners from the state and federal agencies, Illinois DNR, Indiana DNR, NOAA, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, and EPA, our local partner, Audubon Great Lakes, the Forest Preserves of Cook County, and Hay and & Associates for all of their efforts that have led to the completion of this restoration project that we're celebrating today. Um, all of these project partners took um, uh, they took part in um, our project management meetings that took place once a month. And during those meetings, we talked about project activities, next steps, and made the important decisions uh, that led to the success of this restoration project. Since 2018, so it's been about four, four and a half years, uh, the Great Lakes Commission has coordinated the restoration efforts that have brought us all together, utilizing funding from a NOAA GLC regional partnership. Uh, these partnerships help to ensure that key projects in the Great Lakes Basin receive critical funding while maintaining necessary flexibility. And this project is a real success story. Uh, nearly $1.2 million of GLRI funds were directed to Powderhorn Lake through this jo uh, NOAA GLC regional partnership. That has resulted in incredible benefits, including the reconnection of Powderhorn Lake with Wolf Lake, allowing passage between the two for native fish and wildlife species, and the restoration of 192 acres of wetland habitat, 45 acres of native vegetation, as well as the creation of 630 linear feet of stream habitat, which we'll see here shortly. A study led by GLC showed that completion of projects like this one not only provide ecological benefits, but also economic benefits, including increased property values and significantly enhanced recreation opportunities and spending. So clearly these successes are being felt throughout the local communities and once again demonstrate the strong return on investment of restoring and protecting our Great Lakes. The GLC is proud to help facilitate the progress we are all celebrating today 
and we look forward to continuing this important work with our partners. Thank you. And I'd like to introduce Chip O'Leary of the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody looks happy to be here. Probably not as happy as those of us on the work team here. So <laughs> Jill mentioned, I think you said three or four years back, but we're, we're thinking at least for my role about seven years back when we started thinking about this project from the beginning. Um, and I think folks have touched on this a number of times, but I want to really, really uh, reiterate that if you're in conservation and you're not working with partners, you're not getting anything done. This is a strictly only achieved through an extensive set of partnerships working at all different levels. Um, this started out as just the observation that Powderhorn Lake was too full. Okay, it's too full. What do we do about it? It's a local problem. And so um, the Forest Preserves partnered with IDNR Coastal and with Hay and & Associates, and they looked at that problem to come up with a solution. Uh, simultaneously, um, Audubon Great Lakes, in partnership with the Wetlands Initiative, in partnership with the Calumet Collaborative, um, started building a plan for wetlands in the Calumet overall. And so what they were able to do was take this local project, put it in a regional context, and think about how we could do um, important work at, at a local level, but impact a bigger area. And um, much thanks to Michelle and Nat, who's not here. They also then took that plan and started talking with folks in the Great Lakes Commission and National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administrations and began discussing this project and folks there recognized that this was an important node in doing restoration in the watershed for Lake Michigan. So it kind of went from a local to a regional to a large regional based project. And uh, at that point, as Jill mentioned, we built a technical team and from there we then like, okay, now what do we do? So then now you need to bring in expertise. So you bring in organizations like the Illinois Natural History Survey who can help you understand what fish need, how do they get from here and there. We were lucky enough to get folks from the Indiana DNR since Wolf Lake is a bi-state lake. And um, we worked with folks at the Illinois Nature Preserve Commission and other organizations. And um, we then worked also with folks locally to look at some of the local issues with flooding and um, we worked with private utilities of which there were a number and i think a lot of folks got thanks on this project but i want to have a big thanks to the uh, indiana harbor belt railroad um, without whose partnership we would not have been able to do this project at all so thank you to them as well um, so as, as folks mentioned at the beginning and throughout these talks the the original issue was a lake that's too high it's full all the time it tips over into the neighborhoods and avenues K, L, M, and N. It flips over onto the railroad and you could walk on the railroad tracks and see water all the way through the middle. It's impacting the nature preserve on one side. Uh, what do we do about it? And this project was just an amazing concept and we hope to see all the results that we wanna see. We wanna see fish connections between two important fisheries. We wanna see wetland birds returning to uh, a marsh that once existed, a 50 acre marsh that was once super abundant with birds, fish, turtles, everything you could think of. And um, we'd like to do that all with one project and we're here to look at it today. And I know that's a lot, but I hope you guys will stick around for a little while, take a tour of the site itself and take a look at some of the neat features that the engineers that put this project together designed and now we have complete. So thank you very much. Now we've been joined by another uh, South South Side and South Suburban Commissioner, Commissioner Stan Moore. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Cook County Commissioner Stanley Moore. Welcome to the Fourth District. I'm excited to see so many people here today doing what is so important. The Southland has a beautiful, rich history, a beautiful community that deserves this type of attention, deserves this type of uh, preservation. And I'm proud to do my part to work with Cook County Forest Preserve, who is doing an amazing job. Let's give them a round of applause, please. They managed to maintain and protect 70,000 acres of land. 
and they preserve those lake those those properties and, and we've done an amazing job for these communities which makes this a vibrant and better community to live work and shop in thank you for your attention to our concerns and thank you for coming out and i hope that we look at all of these projects and we work to to make all of them a better place thank you thank you all right are there any questions Chauncey, got any questions? Nope. <laughs> all right. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you all. Let's do a big one, two, three. Yes, ma'am.